Hello. If you've completed all the programming and quiz exercises before this one, then you've demonstrated that you are getting the hang of these if statements and the use of logic within Python programs. In this video and the next few exercises, we are thus going to focus on using what you have learned about programming to understand some formal logic, namely the concept of negation. Before we get onto that, however, let's first briefly review what we have learned that thus far and what we have discussed at length. We have learned that variables are addresses in memory and that we can store values in the state of a variable. We have then learned that functions are used to change the state of these variables and that logic allows us to make the behavior of the program, i.e. what functions are executed, dependent on the state of the variables. In the exercises, we have focused on using logic in the form of if-else blocks such as the one shown here. Within these if-else blocks, the truth value of a logical proposition is determined. For example, in this code, we determine if the variable x has a value that is less than zero. If the truth value of this proposition is one, then we execute the code shown here. If the truth value of this proposition is zero, then we execute the code shown here. The concept from formal logic that we are going to introduce in this video allows us to express how this code works in a different way. We are introducing the negation of a logical proposition, which is the proposition that is guaranteed to be true if the original proposition, x is less than zero, in this code is false. Instead of stating that this code is executed if the proposition x is less than zero is false, we can state that this code is executed when the negation of this proposition, in this case x is greater than or equal to zero, is true. The negation of a proposition is a completely abstract concept in formal logic. We thus do not need to explain what proposition we are considering when we discuss this concept. If we write a truth table for negation, we can thus simply say that A is a logical proposition we might want to conceive of. Any logical proposition can then be true or false, i.e. 1 or 0. The negation of the logical proposition A is written using the symbol shown here. Furthermore, as discussed on the pre previous slide, the negation of A is the proposition that is false whenever A is true and true whenever A is false, as shown here. A concrete example of this negation is shown here. The negation of the proposition a is equal to b is a is not equal to b. In this case, if the original proposition a is equal to b is true, then the negation is obviously false, as a and b are not not equal. They are equal. If, by contrast, the original proposition is false, then the negation of a and b is true, as a and b are not equal. Notice that a is greater than b is not the equivalent to the negation of a is not equal to b. If a and b are equal, then a is not greater than b. If a is less than b, then A and B are not equal, however, and both of these propositions are simultaneously false. In other words, when you are constructing the negation of some proposition, you must take pains to ensure that the negation of the proposition is true whenever the original proposition is false and vice versa.
To summarise then, the negation of a proposition is another proposition. The negation is true if the original proposition is false, and the negation is false if the original proposition is true. Hopefully, this is reasonably clear. Before I move on, I just want to be clear on what we are doing within the programming exercises that follow, though. In the exercises thus far, we have started with an array of numbers such as the one shown here. We have then introduced a logical proposition and constructed a second array that contains the elements from the original way, array for which the proposition is true. If you were to write a, di a program based on the diagram I have drawn here, it would return 2, which is the length of the array that contains all the elements of the original way, array for which the proposition is true. Critically, however, our function is not returning the logical proposition. We are instead using the logical proposition to calculate a number, i.e. an object which is different from the proposition. In the exercises that follow, you're going to do something similar using the negation of a proposition that you are given. In this case, the negation of a is equal to 2 is a is not equal to 2. You would thus find all the elements in the original array that are not equal to 2 and return 9, which is the number of elements in the original array that are not equal to 2. The point I want to emphasise is that 9 is not the negation. The negation of the proposition a equals 2 is a is not equal to 2. In other words, the negation of a proposition is another proposition. It is not a number. I hope that's clear. Good luck with the exercises. And as always, ask for help if you are struggling.